Donald Trump scores two huge wins in the January 6th narrative used to lock him up. AG Letitia James of NYC orders fire department chief to hunt down someone who heckled her during a conference. Biden takes a big loss on the Texas border thanks to the court system. And former House Representative Liz Cheney uh, has new evidence out that she lied in order to get Donald Trump locked up during the January 6th TV special. I want to say thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. Also, make sure to check out my interview from earlier today. I was able to track down Joe Biden's private stenographer while he was vice president, and he starts spilling all the tea on Biden's connection to Ukraine, to Burisma, to the cartels, to China. It's a really, really great interview. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, this is a new system I'm trying. Can you guys just let me know, yes, if you can hear me? I want to make sure that my microphone is working. All right. Just a few days ago, President Joe Biden may have actually thought for himself, which is a rare thing. Before departing on a flight, Joe Biden was asked if he regretted calling Lincoln Riley's alleged killer an illegal during his State of the Union address. He said, I don't regret it. Technically not supposed to be here. So saying, uh, yeah, this guy is not supposed to be here. He's an illegal. But like clockwork, the president had a sudden change of heart once he got on national television. He said, I, should have used, I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have. Uh, it's undocumented. Now, why is the Democrat Party so obsessed with controlling what someone says? If Biden can't even call a crime a crime, how are we supposed to take him serious? This person should not have been in the country. And this poor girl would be alive today. Now, contrast that with Biden defending the killer and his pronouns or, or the way he wants to be referred to as compared to President Donald Trump, who met with the Riley family before attending a rally in Georgia. In a picture that has now surfaced online, Trump can be seen hugging her grieving parents. During the rally, Donald Trump vowed to work towards justice for their daughter, Lincoln Riley, and responded to Biden's apology by stating, he, the killer, was an illegal alien. He was an illegal immigrant. He shouldn't have been in our country, and he never would have been under the Trump policy. Biden should be apologizing, uh, not for the killer, but to this family. Now, which president would you rather have if you sadly found yourself in the same boat? The one that calls your child's killer an illegal and says they'll do everything they can to make sure that never happens again? Or the person who goes on national television and says, man, I'm so embarrassed that I called this guy an illegal. Uh, that, that, that was a really bad move on my part. Like, man, talk about putting salt in the wound of this family. Just so, so sad. All right, now, while we're on the topic of immigration, a federal judge has issued Texas a huge win by ruling against the Biden White House. In an effort to stop the construction of the Texas border wall, Joe Biden attempted to claim that he had authority to divert taxpayer-funded money to different projects. However, the judge strongly rejected this argument because the funds were clearly appropriated for and approved for the building of a barrier system. Now, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey championed the ruling by stating, this is a huge step forward in the fight to secure our border at a key moment in our nation's history. Now, isn't it interesting that Joe Biden felt he had authority on the border when it came to taking our money and putting it towards his pet projects. But when it comes to actually building a wall and keeping us safe, he was willing to steal our money and appropriate it to something completely different. Absolutely, absolutely crazy. All right. Now, during an interview with CNBC, former President Donald Trump seemingly contradicted things that he has said in the past. 
uh, and it's being taken out of context, saying that he wants to cut Social Security and Medicare out. He stated, there is a lot that you can do in terms of entitlement, in terms of cutting, and in terms of also the theft and the bad management of entitlements. In response, the Trump campaign clarified that he was clearly talking about cutting waste and not cutting entitlement programs. Look, Donald Trump has even had to fight Republicans who have tried to cut Social Security and Medicare benefits and said, are you out of your mind? We can't do that to our, our seniors. And so he's stood up even to Republicans, but also against Democrats. Now, despite these facts, President Joe Biden saw the opportunity to bash Donald Trump and took it. During a speech in New Hampshire, Joe Biden stated this morning, Donald Trump said, cut to Social Security and Medicare are on the table again. The bottom line is he's still at it. I'm never going to allow it to happen. I won't cut Social Security. I won't cut Medicare. All right. Now, over in New York City, Attorney General Letitia James has responded to firefighters who booed her during a promotional ceremony for officers. She was trying to speak, and they obviously are not happy with what she's doing over in Nassau County. They're not happy with what she did to uh, Donald Trump. And so they booed her. Well, now she wants her revenge. In response, New York's fire department warned that people should not get political while on duty, stating they are gathering video and identity members uh, that brought discredit to the department. So what will happen to those who are guilty for exercising their First Amendment rights? Are they going to be fired? Are they going to be re-educated? I mean, seriously, they're not happy with this lady or they are pro-Donald Trump and suddenly she's having them hunted down. She's literally, they're going through videotapes to find their identities so that they can track them down and fire them or reprimand them or uh, put them through re-education uh, classes. It's crazy. She's, she's lost her mind. Now, Letitia James is known for using fear as a motivating factor to get what she wants. For instance, she recently warned Nassau County of legal action if they didn't overturn their decision to ban biological boys from girls' sports. Nassau County official Bruce Blakeman has now sued Letitia James for unconstitutional discrimination in a self-described effort to protect women's rights. Now, it's just time to see if they can get a fair trial in New York, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, literally, this community voted and decided that there should be boy sports and girl sports and no crossover. And now the, this crazy left-wing ideologue is trying to force this issue onto Nassau County. All right, now, while I'm on the topic of New York and New York City, uh, New York Governor Kathy Hochul had to call up 750 National Guard soldiers in order to stand in subways and scare criminals from committing crimes. The crime is up 45%. Murder, attacks, vandalism, violence, um, theft, all, all of it is up. Well, I guess they did too good of a job because now Governor Kathy Hochul has now banned these soldiers from having their rifles to defend themselves and make people feel safe while riding the subway. And I, I spoke to some people involved in the police today. They said that this is extremely dangerous for these soldiers and these police officers to not be armed if something big happens. I mean, she says that having these guns might scare people. Like, hello, that's the whole point. The whole point is to scare the criminals. She doesn't get it. That's the entire point. Now, I'm so glad that I live in a constitutional carry state that believes in the Second Amendment. Because when we see guns, we don't freak out. When I see someone grocery shopping next to me with a gun on their hip, it actually brings me comfort. It doesn't cause me to panic. I see it every day. Every time I go to the grocery store, I see people with guns. 
It literally doesn't bother me a bit. What bothers me is being somewhere where nobody but criminals have guns. That's what's happening on the subways in New York. And that's exactly what she's trying to ban. She's literally saying, put your life on the line, but don't have any way to defend yourself or the people that you are now being hired to defend. All right, now listen to this. Pay attention. This is big, big news. Molly Hemingway from The Federalist has recently published a piece that former Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming and the January 6th committee might have purposely concealed evidence that could have potentially exonerated Donald Trump from any wrongdoing regarding the attack on the Capitol. I mean, they already know that he wasn't involved, that he had no connections to white supremacy groups or motorcycle gangs or any of these people that decided to be there that day. He doesn't know any of them. He, he's a billionaire from New York. How does he know any of these people? He doesn't. And they were never able to prove that. Now, this article points out that the committee made the decision on their own to not present an interview with Deputy Chief of Staff Anthony Ornato. In this interview, Chief Ornato revealed that Donald Trump had proposed deploying 10,000 National Guard troops in order to maintain order at the Capitol. He did not want anything to go bad at the Capitol. In fact, he wanted it so much, he wanted 10,000 people with rifles saying, don't mess with the Capitol. And now he has testified under oath that this is true. There are also other people coming forward saying that they overheard discussions with White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows about telling Mayor Muriel Bauer that Trump wanted National Guard at the Capitol to ensure peace. But of course, now they're saying, no, that didn't, that didn't happen. And remember, they, they actually destroyed evidence the day before they were supposed to turn it over. The day before. You guys, we're, we're living in a banana republic. This is sad. Like, makes me sad. I, I want to raise my children in a place uh, where honesty is valued, uh, justice is served. Absolutely crazy. Now, what do you think should happen to Liz Cheney for purposely bearing evidence that would have exonerated Donald J. Trump? I'd like to hear from you. Be kind. I don't want to get banned on YouTube for somebody writing some kind of threat. That's not who we are, but you can be honest. Now, it's funny because Democrats praised Liz Cheney for being brave and a courageous truth teller, but in reality, she was lying and she was hiding evidence on purpose. You can't be a truth teller and a liar. You, you can only be one. So what's going on there, right? I mean, didn't her father teach her the value of telling the truth? Oh, wait. Her dad is Dick Cheney. You know, the guy that lied about weapons of mass destruction so that the United States military could kill a million people in Iraq. These people didn't even know that they had been lied to. These soldiers were sent into battle with orders to kill based off of lies from Dick Cheney. <laughs> he is a dick. A Dick Cheney. <laughs> All right, now, ever since January 6th, Joe Biden has been trying to convince the American people that electing Donald Trump would be the end of democracy because he tried to overturn the election. But according to a recent Rasmussen poll, 57% of Democrats oppose certifying the election if Donald Trump wins, when Donald Trump wins, right? Think about that. 57% of Democrats that are mad and say that Donald Trump tried to overturn the election by sicking these groups on the Capitol, they're now saying, if this guy wins, we're, we shouldn't count the votes. There's no way we should allow him to be president. We, we should block him and not allow the peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> oh 
oh my gosh, you guys, the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy is absolutely insane. 57% of Democrats say, if Donald Trump wins, do not certify the election. That's from Rasmussen, one of the most reputable polling companies out there. Okay, now speaking of January 6th, remember when Liz Cheney's star witness, Cassidy Hutchinson, said under oath that Donald Trump was so angry and so violent in the limo when it started taking him away from the Capitol that he came over the partition and grabbed the steering wheel away from the driver and said, take me to the Capitol right now. Well, the driver released an official report today that President Donald Trump did no such thing. He didn't put down the glass. He didn't come over the partition. He didn't grab the steering wheel in anger. And he didn't try to get Secret Service to break their oath and take him into danger. He didn't do any of that, according to the driver. And now there's four other White House employees that said no such thing happened. That means that this woman lied under oath to embarrass Donald Trump. Her lies could get this man thrown in jail. But the bigger question is, why did it take three years to officially verify that this story was fabricated? And, and you watch, you watch. Nothing will happen to Cassidy Hutchinson. That's called liberal privilege. Nothing is going to happen. But we know, we all know, we know that she lied under oath. She lied under oath because Liz Cheney brought her in knowing that she would lie under oath. And now we know that Liz Cheney and the J6 committee destroyed evidence and purposely withheld evidence that would have exonerated Donald J. Trump. If you do that in a trial, you go to jail. You cannot withhold evidence. That is illegal. You have to share. It's called discovery. You have to share everything. These people should go to jail. They should get in trouble. If you and I did this, we'd go to jail for five years. Lying to the FBI, you go to jail for five years. All right. More lies. You guys, this is, I, I hate to share this stuff. I know some of you are not going to take this well because you, you think Dr. Fauci is a hero. A new report came out today on how Dr. Fauci and others purposely used religious language to manipulate religious people into getting the schmackzine. Representatives were specifically told to use religious language like, the shot is a miracle from God. God blessed Pfizer to find a miracle cure. This is an answer to all of our prayers. Or words like, we have to have faith in science. We have to pray that God will bless these scientists to perform a miracle. They then started telling religious people, bishops, pastors, heads of churches, they said, we prayed that God would give us a vaccine with 60% efficacy, but instead he gave us one with 96% efficacy. This is an answer from God. Well, it turns out those only have a 19% efficacy and it doesn't even last 60 days. What a joke. I hope religious people never fall prey to government lies ever again. Do not trust your government. Do not let people that do not believe in God use language about God to trick you into putting billions and billions of dollars into corporate donors' coffers. That's exactly what happened. It's disgusting to me. Instead, you know what they do? This is as close as they get to religion. They play God and they say, you know what? We're going to break the law and go to a different country. And we're going to do something called gain of function research, where we're going to take a virus and we're going to amplify it so that it is a thousand percent more deadly, 10 times more deadly. Oh, it, it didn't take because usually viruses don't jump from one species to another. 
oh, we're going to put a furin cleavage site so that it can hook into the human body, so that it can attack the human body. Th this, this is playing God. I mean, like, what's the likelihood that a, a virus is going to jump from one animal into humans? It's very, very unlikely. And yet they are playing God, but then they tricked people. They used religious language to make you believe that they had created a miracle. All right. I know some of you are, that's, that's going to rub you wrong, but that is the truth. It just came out in a new report. All right. Cora McCarver, thank you so much for the super chat. You're amazing. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Uh, over in the Red Sea off the coast of Yemen. The U.S. Navy has been having a crazy 48-hour period. It's been reported that the Houthi terrorists have possibly carried out their largest attack yet. According to CENTCOM and the Pentagon, the Navy shot down at least 15 drones, which presented an imminent threat to merchant vessels, the U.S. Navy, men and women in uniform, and coalition ships in the region. They will be deciding how they want to respond to this. It's pretty sad that uh, these drones are able to take out such expensive military equipment, but that's the new battle. That's what they're facing in the Red Sea. It's what they're facing up in Ukraine. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. All right. Well, um, that's my update for today. As uh, I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you guys so much for stopping by, for supporting the channel. Um, it really means a lot to me. Hours and hours of research go into each of these broadcasts. I want to thank my team. I want to thank you guys. Make sure to hit that like button because it tells YouTube to share the truth with more people. Hit that subscribe button. We want to get to 1.6 million amazing truth seekers. I'm going to leave a video probably right here uh, to go watch that interview with Joe Biden's stenographer where he spills the tea on the different Biden crime family crimes. Hey, thanks so much. Love you guys. Have a great night.